Hey folks, Flip here, and welcome to episode 19 of our Minecraft Survival Let's Play. Today we are starting off over in our starter area of the city. Last episode, we built that, which is being blocked by the city gate. It is eventually going to be a library, hopefully by the end of today's episode. To get ourselves started here though, I wanted to take a little bit of time to do something for a test. I want to take a few of the villagers that we have down in this area, more specifically the uh, non-librarian villagers, and let them loose in our lower area of the village. That's because, well, one, we have a lot of them in here, right? And they're causing a little bit of a lag being stacked on top of each other. And number two is that I want to get some cat spawns. As you all have probably noticed many, many times, is I have been blown up by creepers. Just just a few times in this world. To put it nicely, just a few times. So I was thinking we take some of these guys, let them roam around in the village down there, and then eventually that means some cats will spawn, right? I hope so. However, right now, all of the villagers are gonna be going directly up there. So we've actually gotta revert or redirect this place to get them going downwards. Now I wanna test something, is if we just send one off this way, will it die? <laughs> To, uh, that's not a nice way of saying it, but will the villager die from the falling damage? And send you off on your merry way? He's like, oh god, no, no, oh god, no, 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 no. Yeah, yep, I'm sorry, buddy, you've got a test. Somebody has to be the test subject, and it certainly is not gonna be me. And he survived, look at that, oh, he's totally fine. Now today, I would love to be able to build the interior of the library up above, let this guy run around in town down here, and while I grab a few more of these, go ahead and click that like button down below, folks, if you're still enjoying the series, and let me know what you wanna see in the next episode. Should we do the dragon fight, or should we still continue to build some things up around the base? Or they're just gonna find a way to instantly drown themselves by falling into the one area of water inside the village. These, these, these villagers, these villagers confuse me. I am very worried we're gonna end with a lot of zombie villagers around here very soon, but they seem to be really enjoying it. So where are we got, so uh, it looks like we got a stonemason over there. We've got a few fishermen setting up right here where he wants some raw cod for cooked cod or emeralds for a bucket of cod. And then this guy, what are you selling? Ooh, wheat and potatoes for emeralds, not a bummer thing that we only have carrots. I think I'm gonna send just a few more of them out there as we can watch them all run around and everything like that, and it should increase the amount of cats that we get spawning. Good thing we have a bell right over here from the one village we have found so far in the world, and I was thinking a good spot for this guy could be right over here, just being right on the edge of our factory. Feels like that makes good sense. We can ring it and all of the villagers should be running on inside to where he can't use that door. Just go find find another door to go inside, buddy, okay? Oh, yep, no, freaking out. Oh, where are we going, where are we going, where are we running? There we go, we've got way too many villagers down here and eventually we should hopefully see some cats appearing. Now that I'm thinking about it though, I should probably get rid of the spiky cactus in the middle of the village square street area. Not the safest thing for villagers if you ask me. Can you, you've even been in here so long you've lost your job, dude. Do I need to really help you out of there? All right, come on, Timmy, get out of the well, buddy. Okay, there you go, look at you, you did it. Oh, you made it out, don't you, you, mm. Guys, guys, we talked about this. I just got him out of the well, thank you. Please, just nobody go in here. Nobody go inside of that, all right? Why do you wanna be against the glass? What is up here that you could want? Why did I let you out in my village? It was so peaceful and happy down here, now there's dudes everywhere. They're like, we own this village now, this is our home. We own this. At least I can be safe up there. I know they can't get me. I decided to take a little bit of a break away from the city where the villagers were buzzing around a little bit too much for me and coming over to the flower forest village where I've been breeding up these bees like a crazy. Oh my gosh, I love it. I actually ran the farm up there for a good while. So I wanna see how much loot we're able to get, but I'm after these guys right here for some more decoration. In the last episode, we used a few of them to be able to add a bit of decoration around the village area or the city area up above because it's not gonna be able to give a villager a profession. So that block is gonna be huge for us to use moving forwards and lots of furnaces and craft tables and holy cow, wow. We have a lot of seeds. I think this is more seeds than I've ever had at one time in Minecraft. I love this. The army of bees is slowly growing and we will eventually set up some sort of a farm in the nether most likely. I'm gonna bring these honeycombs home with us and it's time to figure out how we can detail out and decorate the library a bit. 
Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you saw those particles right there. He's gonna do it again. He's gonna do it again. And moving on. All I want is cats. All I want are cats. If they don't survive, they don't survive. That's not my fault. All I want for them is to spawn some cats down here. And moving on, we probably are gonna want a lot of bookshelves and a lot of lecterns for the old library. That seems pretty important to me for, you know, decorating out a library area. We've got a bunch of sugar cane. We could trade that for emeralds and then buy bookshelves. But recently I actually did acquire a Luden 3 on the sword over here on a stream. So that means we have a lot of leather for ourselves here too. So there's 57 books. Then taking, we have so much dark oak wood. I don't even know how many bookshelves are going to be able to craft off of this. 19. We probably need more than 19. Hey cows, how we doing boys? I know it already came through here recently, but have some more wheat. Yep, we gotta grow up the herd again. I need you all around here. You're a very important part of this economy and this Minecraft world. I want you to know that I love you all and appreciate your sacrifices. Got 14 more leather so far. I'm gonna leave the rest of them in there so we can keep expanding it a bit further, but there we have it. We are up to 21 bookshelves. That should be enough to get ourselves started. I'm coming to the realization now that these uh, trapdoors might be a bit of an issue as we decorate around the city. So we'll have to be more careful above that when we're in the city part, because I don't really care about those guys down there. They're not really worth keeping. Since we're in the spot of waiting for all of the cows to grow up and everything like that, I figured we could at least get ourselves started in this point up here and start with the decorating bit. Obviously last time we gathered all of the dark prismarine and I wanted to see how that would look up here if we just kind of started extending it all over the place. But we've got all of this space, right? We have so much space to be working with in here and I'm very, very excited for that. But it also comes with a bit of a challenge of how do we fill it and how do we make sure that it has a good amount of flow to it. So first and foremost, I was thinking we could come all the way up here and add in some brick going up to this layer here. It kind of boxes in this little bit. We lose those six blocks of space, but it's going to be totally fine. We're going to put another layer for a floor right at this point, I think. Down here to make it feel like we've got the rounded door on the inside as well. We can do a little bit of the action with those guys. And to start ourselves off with some good lighting is I was thinking we just copy that same design that we had on the outside with the lanterns and the blackstone slabs and it just helps a little bit in there then we've got these weird little pockets on the corner which i was thinking would work really well with having some of our lecterns in there we need to start getting lecterns in somewhere so i figured this was a good spot to hide two of them where is if we skip this and we start working our way up with some stairs in here i'm thinking bringing this up to three tall i've been recently researching game design Again, and just seeing how people lay out levels and design things within levels in video games and why they make decisions that they do. And one thing that I found was that if you have a staircase that goes up, then it flattens out and then it goes up a little bit more and then it flattens out again, say at right here. And then we turn it one final time and bring it up to this next layer, which would be right about at this level right here. The reason why people do this though, which I thought was very interesting is because it's easier for the player to move up here and then turn and then move up and then turn and move up instead of doing a spiral staircase, go blah, 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 and eventually they'll always end up falling down here. So I figured since we're working with villagers, that's not a bad bet to go for something that might be a bit easier to traverse and something that has a little bit more logic behind it being designed. Because uh, as we all know, the villagers down in the village have already killed themselves. One thing I thought would be really cool for bookshelves is to actually fill this entire back wall here with bookshelves, honestly replacing some of this stone with some bookshelves too, but we don't have that right now. Then right over here, naturally we gotta include a bit of a fireplace for ourselves. I thought that would be quite fun. So I brought in some campfires for us. We can do those guys right in there. We've got some stone brick walls. And then from there, I've got some carpet we can throw in front of it. We've got some iron bars to stop the villagers from getting inside. And we have the polished granite stairs, which we can throw like right here. Surrounding the rest of the area with some brick as well to help bring that color in line so we don't have the random bits of stone. My thought is that all of the stone that we have in here is something that we could remove and change into another block that maybe will work a little bit better. I don't know what the plan is quite yet, but I wanted to take 
brick going up as far as we possibly can this way. For now, let's just focus on the first floor. So we'll bring it all the way up to here. It is currently nighttime outside. So we're going to be quickly finding out if any of our villagers are surviving down in the village or not. And then I was thinking to add a little bit extra detail and some extra pop to this wall here is we could simply just have some brick walls right like that. And it helps bring a little bit more of a chimney atmosphere to it. I don't really know. I just thought it looked kind of cool. Now for the beehives, right? These things I think are going to be super fun to work with and super fun to work on some extra details. So we can do some right in there, right there. And then we can bring some lecterns in around this whole point where some more villager workstations can be. And maybe we have a final one right in here. So now we're at the point where we need to do some finer details and figure out how we can get everything looking super nice in this area. So what if we came back here and we started bringing these guys in a little bit further like that? we can start adding in some bookshelves into the wall. So it feels like they're going back there. That is a fake wall that goes all the way back to wherever we're going to have the next building. So it's okay to use this outside thing as a bit of extra area to detail with. So I think having some bookshelves in there will be super cool for the floor up above. However, I was thinking we could just do some jungle planks and then this will actually give us enough height space below us that we can decorate and detail out the underside. On that front, I want to start by bringing in some of these strip spruce logs going across here. And I'm thinking a second layer right across here as well. We have so much in the way of support on this side with being these pillars and everything back there that it should be a okay without them. And crafting up some spruce slabs, we can bring those guys right in here as well. If I can place blocks today. Then I will need to go acquire some spruce trap doors to throw those right in there too. So it's going to fully cover up the jungle log that we have above us. And for one final detail add while we are in here currently before we run back down and grab some more supplies is this wall right over here. I think needs some love. I think it really needs some love. So I was thinking we can actually remove all of the stone which I know will have some pockets showing the outside for now, but eventually there will be another building blocking that. I've been very, very big on accent walls recently inside of builds, inside of whatever, and actually just really enjoying them IRL as well. So I was thinking we could bring these guys in here and I've done something like this before where we extend them all going up out of this. So at the base, we have the alternating pattern and then we flip that moving up here. Now with the fully completed accent wall, I think that is looking real, real cool. So let me go down and grab some bushes, grab some more detail things that we can throw around here. My friends, I've been an extremely busy person working over here, getting a lot of stuff done. And I think that painting is going to fit perfectly up there. The second floor is now in with look at all these bookshelves over here. I got to find a way to decorate these walls a little bit better. I'm not liking the stone and I think we're going to have to change that eventually. But for now, it's going to have to do. We've got our front accent wall. Then we got the nice gray palette going around. But I decided to turn this into a little bit of a reading area so we can have somewhere for people to walk up here. They can take a book. They can chill on one of these benches then we've got a secret entrance up into what I'm calling the storage area. We're going to call it the storage area. As we've uh, now lost almost every single villager down inside of the city, I wanted to create somewhere. I believe this is no, it's not mob safe right in there. All right, well, let's do another torch right here and right there. That'll work out great for us. I want to create a spot up here where we can store some of our prized villagers. Everybody else is going to be down there. I don't want to fill this with all of our villagers and just leave them up here. But I'm thinking like the mending villager and maybe the protection for villager. Those guys need to go up to the top there. Now for that villager trading action that we might be able to work with here. It's time to Ooh, I've got to finish this track up before we move any villagers. Do not let me forget that one. But I was thinking we could stop that guy right in here. And we've got all these lovely villagers down there. We got the looting guy. We've got this guy right over there with the protection four. But anyways, we've got these three. I want to get them all into that upper layer up there. So the villagers are going to stroll on into this point right here, where then we're going to have this little lever that'll be flipped off. So it's going to stop them. And I want to have a zombie right in here. Getting him in there is going to be rather annoying. And the idea is that we're going to throw a piston down here, probably right at that layer that's going to move up and down with another lever or something right back in here where we can have the zombie villager pop up or the zombie pop up and then he'll be able to gnaw at their ankles a little bit here and then they'll be like, oh my gosh, I'm a zombie too. Now for the zombie villager to make sure he doesn't despawn on us, I wanted to grab a name tag and there they are. And we'll name him Poof. And there we go with a simple redstone wire from right at a lever over here to this guy right there. That's going to be housing our zombie villager inside. And if we deactivate it, it'll drop back down. Then we can activate it again. And I think that's at the height where he's going to be able to attack. 
the villager sitting in a minecart. That's a block and a half below, so his head should be right about this point. Now for the fun part of, I need a zombie. Up here, inside this cave, without killing my villagers. Gonna go ahead and uh, block this off right there, and I think the game plan is gonna be just creating a dark room back in, in I fell into the wires. Creating a dark room right back in here, and hoping that the zombie spawns inside of it. That seems like an easy way to do it, right? This is definitely a spawnable area inside of here. All we gotta do is hopefully get a zombie for ourselves. So I'm thinking what we can do now is I'm gonna go find my bow. I'm thinking the bow is gonna help out quite a lot here. Then we'll see what spawns inside of here when we walk back up. All right, let's see what we got. I ended up boating off into the distance a little ways to see if anything else would just remove the mud. You're already in there. Like, I just, I just want one of you. I don't need to, I don't need to. Yep, we're just gonna get rid of you. Hi, buddy, how are you? Do you wanna be named now? I think that's a great name for you. Yeah, you can just hang in there. And then we activate that. That's the wrong lever. We activate this one. Oh, I need to change that to a slab, I think. So we can have him sitting there, or he sits down there, which shouldn't have any issues with our villagers. And that's gonna be great, because right here, you should be able to. Can you not attack me? Can you not attack me? Do I need to bring you up even farther? Oh, don't tell me that. Don't tell me I need to bring you up another block. But first, I should probably go make sure that we get rid of all of the mobs. I'm gonna try bringing one of the villagers out and see if it works for them, and then we'll go from there. We wanna try with one of these guys that I just don't really care about? Sure. And we definitely need to raise them up one. Big bummer. Okay, well, I'll figure out how we can do that here without losing him. So my thought is if we unpower this one, that piston will retract, then we can add a brand new piston with this guy right here and just do that and that'll take him up. I think that should be working, right? You're thinking about it. Come on, you are literally touching the minecart that he is sitting in. Just convert him to a zombie. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. No, why is this not working? I'll leave you guys here to think for a minute, okay? I'll leave you here just to think about it. You know, just if you want to, you can just convert him into a zombie. Can you even attack me? You can attack me, why aren't you attacking him? What the heck, bro? Oh my gosh, it worked. I just walked back in. I got the rail system built all the way up the rest of the way. So that works. That's great. Oh my gosh. Yay. I'm sorry, buddy. You have been zombified and uh, don't, you don't really have a job yet. I'm sorry. You were a test dummy. Thank you for being a test. As we have three villagers, we want to convert at this point in time. I've got to come down here and we actually have splash potions of weakness and three golden apples ready to go. So that is going to be awesome for us on this front all we should need to do is take our looting three guy right over here and have him move out he'll send off to this direction and stop right in front and we flip the switch and he's getting converted and there we go he's now converted we drop the zombie back down we get a little ways back here so we don't splash ourselves potion of splash in there weakness thing and there we go he is now converting if we do that and just bump into him real fast Please go forward, go forward, go forward. Yes, okay. I added in the extra ramp up here, which appears to have either launched him into the sky or he's gonna be actively sitting inside of the top little chamber for us. And there he is, perfect. All right, I'm gonna leave you be for a little bit here, buddy, so you can uh, get all your shaky shakies out. My friends, we have the last villager heading all the way up. Hopefully that way. There we go. He's headed up into his forever home at the top of the library. And I am so excited to see what trades we have on these guys. I'm going to take this rail down real fast before we get all the way up there. So it's just not, you know, disrupting the idea. Actually, I should leave these at first and go up myself. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. We have a major issue here. That was the mending villager. And I accidentally broke the rail there because I had to send it back down because I actually sent him up top and he died. He died. I just checked the trade on him and I was gonna be like, we're gonna go up there and look at the trade. It was a one mending for one. It was one emerald for one mending book. Oh no. Oh no, oh no, oh no. We've lost our mending book again. <laughs> Oh, that was not supposed to happen. I was like, this is going so smoothly. I'm getting done with this. Oh yeah, this is all so good. Oh, we're flying through it. And uh, I, I just I just killed our mending villager. Okay, well, that's a bummer. I don't know why I just took this whole thing down. I have to get another one up there. What am I thinking? Ah, this is gonna be such a pain. Guess it's back to the old villager trading for me. I wanna get another one of these. It's gonna take a while, but we're gonna see. Not the first trade, bummer. I was really hoping. I was really hoping you'd help me out there, buddy, but I guess not. Nope, not the second trade either. Well, we got a fortune three villager trade in here that I don't have the ability to get any more emeralds to 
Fix it. Oh, there's no way I can get 37 emeralds to be able to do that trade. <sighs> Maybe another day, my friend. I need a paper trade. There we go. We've got mending for 26 emeralds and a paper trade, and I don't have enough paper. You stay there, buddy. I'm gonna go get some paper for you. Grabbing a few more of the potions as well. I might just bring up as many as we can and just throw them in the chest that we have up there. Back up top, we still got the mending trade on this guy. Let's lock it in and actually see what else we can unlock and uh, get a few emeralds for ourselves in the process here too. A lot of emeralds. Wow, he keeps giving in. There it goes. Okay, well, thank you, buddy. 19 more emeralds for us. That's pretty solid. And he unlocked lure three, not half bad. And four books for an emerald. Not too bad there either. Well, let's send you on to the next stop in your journey. And he's going all the way up. Yeah. This is where it went wrong last time, as I accidentally had that powered. And he's sitting right there, yet again. He's right over there. Do we have any more powered rails? I do not. So let's go ahead and nab a few of them right here. We probably don't need them going all the way up here. Just do some regular ones in there. And these guys, do I have anything to block you guys off? I do not really. This is the best wall I think I've ever created. <laughs> oh, that's a little rough. All right, so we gotta break that. We gotta break this, and we gotta run powered, powered, and powered, and we can do the little redstone torch, and we're gonna send you all the way back down, buddy. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, you guys, no, no getting out, no getting out. Now Mr. Mending Villager is in position yet again. Currently it's 23 emeralds for a book. And what are we gonna get this time? I would love to get one again. I crafted a bunch of golden apples for us. We got a new splash potion of weakness. We just gotta do that, and now we gotta cure him with a little toss of the potion. And it hit us this time too. And we gotta give you the apple. There you go, look at you, buddy. Shaky shakies all of the zombie is away. They're down to one emerald a piece again. So before we, you know, maybe accidentally kill him, I'm just gonna buy five. That seems like a good way to go. Let's activate that rail, send him off, up, hopefully up to his new forever home. And of course it's nighttime, oh, I gotta go sleep. Up on the second floor of the library, I did install some beds right over here as a form of a bench. Thought that could be kind of a good way to go for us. And now we have a much, much easier way to get up here. Pressing the button, we're inside, they're all inside, and you, my friend, can go right there. Throw on that lectern back and we'll fill in the gaps right out here so nobody else is gonna die by coming into this area. And there we have it, the library is fully furnished, completed and everything. It's looking fantastic. One final little walkthrough down here. Love the accent wall. I think we're gonna have to carry more of that stuff around here as we get some new buildings built up. I'm thinking next time we can tackle some stonemasons, but let me know what you're thinking. We got these three hooligans up here. They need some names and all that lovely stuff, but he is my new best friend. He is so, so very cool. I've got to find some more ways to get some books here. Did anybody trade some bookshelves? You trade some bookshelves. Cracking that one open there for some new uh, books. And we can come over here and grab a three more mending books. Oh, oh, you're my best friend, buddy. You are my best friend. Still no cats, unfortunately, inside of the village, but I figured this would be a great time to at least put some stuff on our armor. These boots, they were almost broken. That guy needs a better production enchant on him, but you know, for now, mending on everything is gonna be really, really nice for us. That's super awesome to see. Anything else down here need mending? Our sword still does. Wow, how can I not put it on the sword? Because it's nine levels. I'll do that one later. How about this guy? Yes, we can throw it on the ax. But that, my friends, is gonna have to do it for today's episode. Thank y'all so very much for watching. Click that like button down below if you did enjoy. Subscribe if you are brand new. And my friends, I will catch you on the flip side.